Welcome to Mission Minute News. I'm Dominican Sister Jean Harris. First, the headlines. Emphasis on inclusion for next synod. Another kind of COVID victim. New SVD mission in Madagascar. Like Mary at Cana. Pope praises U.S. sisters' care of migrants. Dioceses begin dropping masks. Emphasis on inclusion for next synod. Pope Francis has announced that the preparation stage for the next synod will be divided into three phases, diocesan, continental, and universal. The process reflects Pope Francis' idea of synodality as a communal journey for all Catholics in the whole Church through a process of listening and discernment with the overarching synodality theme of inclusion. In the diocesan phase from October 2021 to April 2022, each bishop will meet with the local church to discuss the topics of the synod and then complete a questionnaire prepared by the Vatican to be sent on to their bishop's conference. The second phase will involve gatherings of bishops at the continental level, who will also create texts about their discussions and forward them to the Vatican. Those texts will be the basis for a second draft to be released by June 2023. This working document for the Synod, called an Instrumentum Laboris, and on which much of the discussion will be based, will build on the diocesan and continental phases. Cardinal Mario Grech, head of the Vatican Synod office, explains that the three-stage process will help to make possible a true listening to the people of God to ensure the participation of all. Particular issues expected to be considered include ministry to Catholics who are divorced and remarried, female clergy, and the ongoing destruction of the Amazon rainforest. Another kind of COVID victim. As the pandemic picked up steam in March 2020, did anyone begin to worry about an oversupply of communion or altar breads, hosts as they're often called in Catholic churches? Yes, one group did the nuns who support themselves by baking the breads and supplying them to thousands of parishes and chapels across the country, this being their primary means of financial support. When Catholics began to attend Eucharist via internet or TV, they soon learned to make what is called a spiritual communion, uniting spiritually with the priest's reception of the body of Christ on the screen. Before the pandemic, we had about 200 customers, said Sister Anna Tran, Carmelite, who oversees altar bread production at the Carmel of St. Teresa in Alhambra, California, a community of cloistered, discalced Carmelites. We shipped approximately 250,000 hosts to parishes, hospitals, schools, and religious communities per week. By April of 2020, all of the orders from our regular customers in Southern California, Nevada, and Arizona were canceled or greatly reduced, except for the larger hosts used by the priest. Another contemplative community severely affected was Valley of Our Lady Cistercian Monastery in Prairie du Sac, Wisconsin. Orders dropped nearly 60%. The biggest change seems to have taken place with the Benedictine Sisters of Perpetual Adoration in Clyde, Missouri. They made the difficult decision to largely cease altar bread production, in which they had been engaged since 1910. Sadly, this decision meant that they had to let go 13 paid staff who had worked alongside the nuns. 
Lately, with things opening up, they sold over 2 million hosts from January to April, or about 30% of normal. And an arrangement with Kavanaugh Altar Bread of Rhode Island will allow the sisters to continue producing their low-gluten hosts. Despite the challenges of the pandemic, all the orders agree. The biggest tragedy was that people weren't able to participate in the sacraments. It's just not the same watching on TV, adds Mother Brenda Marie. However, the pandemic did make us feel really united with the people, more at one with them. Certainly a good thing. New SVD mission in Madagascar. On May 13th, 2021, Feast of Our Lady of Fatima, the Eucharist was celebrated for the first time at the new SVD mission just outside Mandrasara in Madagascar. In attendance were representatives of nearby parishes and communities. In this new mission, the SVDs are paying special tribute to Mary, Mother of the Word of God. First, they're constructing a grotto dedicated to Mary, overlooking the villages that lie at the foot of the hill. After that first Eucharist, a special procession brought seven stones to the site, each a different color, symbolizing the fullness of the grace of God through the intercession of Mary. Seven divine word priests, along with the people, laid the stones to serve as the foundation for the grotto. Father Shugishlaf Grod shares that on their arrival in Mandrasara last October, the SVDs began organizing the area by planting 100 different trees surrounding the site of their future residence. Like Mary at Cana, for several years, the educational pastoral team of the Holy Spirit Sisters Province of Argentina, Misiones, was organized and working well. This year, Sister Lydia Kunz assumed the role of pastoral coordinator and began to reorganize a new project for 2021 to 2023, according to Silvia Gabriela Vera, Instituto Superior Santa Maria Posadas. Discerning what the Holy Spirit wants to bring forth in this mission, the team saw the figure of the Virgin Mary, their frequent patron, emerge strongly. So they chose the motto, like Mary, immersed in Trinitarian love, we so hope. And the biblical text, from the wedding at Cana. They called for a workshop for their teachers at every school, but the pandemic allowed only a small group to participate in person, with the charge of replicating what they had experienced at the retreat house, Oasis del Espiritu, deep reflection like that of the Virgin Mary at their respective sites. During Eucharistic adoration, they were to place before Jesus jars full of water, as Mary had asked, and allow themselves to be transformed into new wine, bringing joy, enthusiasm, and celebration to their educational communities. Pope praises U.S. sisters' care of migrants. Pope Francis sent a video message to Sister Norma Pimentel, missionary of Jesus, thanking her for her team's work to welcome Latin American migrants entering the U.S. at the southern border of Texas. Earlier, Sister Norma had sent a letter to the Pope describing the work of Catholic Charities of the Rio Grande Valley, of which she is the executive director. Thank you for what you and your entire team are doing, the Pope responded. Thank you for welcoming and receiving these migrants who come in search of a better life. Some come to advance, while others are fleeing from true social hells. Thank you, sister, he repeated. Thanks to your team. 
he went on to affirm that migrants must be welcomed, protected, accompanied, and integrated. These four things, adding that Catholic Charities is helping people who are asking for assistance to live with more dignity. I accompany you from here, concluded Pope Francis. I pray for you and for all those whom you are accompanying through your work. Then the Pope asked for their prayers. According to its website, Catholic Charities of the Rio Grande Valley provides a place for the countless men, women, and children and infant refugees to rest, have a warm meal, a shower, and change into clean clothing, as well as receive medicine and other supplies before continuing their journey. Counseling services and emergency assistance are also offered to the 23,000 people who have been assisted since 2015 when the center opened at Sacred Heart Catholic Church. Dioceses begin dropping masks. As the COVID-19 pandemic begins to wane in the United States, some Catholic dioceses have started ending mask mandates. According to the Catholic News Agency, dioceses in the states of Ohio, Pennsylvania, and North Carolina are responding to new CDC guidelines, which state that those who have been fully vaccinated no longer need masks in most indoor and outdoor settings, by allowing parishioners to attend services without a mask. According to church law, attendance at Sunday Mass is an obligation, except in gravely extenuating circumstances. Many bishops offer dispensations to this requirement because of the pandemic. However, now that vaccinations are widely available, some bishops are reinstating the obligation as they drop the mass requirement. The whole Ohio Conference of Catholic Bishops wrote in a recent letter, the obligation to attend Mass on Sunday and Holy Days of Obligation is not something God asks of us out of His own necessity to be worshipped, but rather a gift to the faithful for their spiritual well-being, eternal salvation, and formation in our relationship with God and one another. It is likely more dioceses will follow this lead as progress against the disease continues. Electrifying America. In the spring 2021 edition of Solutions, the magazine of the Environmental Defense Fund, the major story is America Goes Electric by Shanti Menon. It tells the story of a mother, Jennifer Cantley, in Nevada who had to drive her sons to school rather than put them on a bus because they are asthmatic and have been hospitalized several times and buses accumulate harmful diesel fumes. So she began working toward getting the state to purchase electric buses. She, with others, and the Environmental Defense Fund are urging Congress to pass the Clean School Bus Act, which would provide $1.2 billion for electric buses and infrastructure. But turning yellow school buses green is only the beginning. More is needed to get millions of cars, trucks, and buses on the highway running with clean energy. Pollution on our streets is constantly adding to the climate crisis. The goal is for all new cars sold to be zero emission by 2035 and all new trucks sold to be the same by 2040. Let's put a priority on health and justice. Pollution worsens conditions from heart disease to asthma, and raise, raises the risk of complications from COVID. Electrifying America requires a massive effort, but will lead to a massive, clean, planet-friendly future. 
it's coming. Buckle up. Help for hungry, anxious families. Inspired by the Maganhawa Community Pantry, the Divine Word College of Kalapan's Community Extension Services launched its Kindness Station April 27th to benefit 150 individuals in families suffering from hunger and anxiety. Also highlighted is the CARE program, Bayan Han, meaning communal unity, helping others without expecting rewards, and the relief operation, encouraging students and teachers to take part in this campaign. My heart is filled with joy, realizing that our kindness station is the bridge for the grace of God poured out to the neediest. We can see here the generosity of many people. They, out of their hearts, share willingly and openly, said Father Renato Malbog, SVD, Community Extension Director. The viral community pantries inspire the kindness station in the country with the mantra of share what you can based on your needs, reflecting the Filipino's Bayanian spirit. The station is located outside the college's main campus where volunteers distribute food items like noodles, rice, eggs, vegetables, and canned goods, plus vitamins and Bibles, and also accepts donations. Children's Day in Bolivia. Every year in Bolivia, on April 12th, the Day of the Child is celebrated. This year was no exception for the missionary sisters, servants of the Holy Spirit, in the city of Santa Cruz de la Sierra. The sisters organized games, dynamics, songs, and snacks for the children in two places the Palmasola Prison, and the San Juan Bautista Parish in the Merced Central neighborhood, giving 160 boys and girls a day of joyful celebration, reports Sister Maria Santissima Ferdinando. Volunteers from the Rotary Club and local businesses collaborated with donations of drinks, cookies, and clothes, and of course, COVID protocols were faithfully followed. A contemplative solution. One thing Americans are pretty much in agreement about is the fact that they are increasingly divided. Polarization heads the news in a variety of contexts, science, climate change, gene editing, stem cell use, not to mention politics in general. One analyst has captured the mood with the title, The Divided States of America. Perhaps a new role for women religious, sisters here in the U.S. who have practically disappeared from view, is to use their expertise in the ways of God to begin repairing the rifts and divisions. The Dominican Sisters of Hope, based in Ossining, New York, a 1995 merger of three congregations, have committed themselves to that mission. Recent years have exposed deep cracks in the foundation of our society, they contend, and many long to connect across the divide. Contemplative dialogue offers a bridge, enabling us to engage in conversations that matter and to hold ourselves and one another with compassion, even in the midst of conflict, as we seek to heal what's broken in ourselves and in the world. To engage others on the journey, the sisters are offering a series of presentations online called Unity from the Depths, a contemplative response to division. The first of four Unity presentations began on May 22nd with Discovering New Paths to Reconciliation and Unity in the 21st Century, led by Gaynell Cronin and Jack Rashmid. 
Contemplation and contemplative dialogue are highly effective ways to communicate deeply with other persons, including God, the critical and evolutionary way toward greater unity. Come on, America, it's worth a try. Active dialogue with Muslim friends. Parish priest, Father Cyprian Pinto, SVD, and the Sister Associates of Mary, Queen of Apostles, celebrated Holy Shabi Qadrar night with their Muslim friends. A group of construction workers in the Immaculate Conception Church compound at Jamal Khan, Chittagong, Bangladesh, during the COVID-19 second wave lockdown. For the Muslims, this night is special, better than the 1,000 nights when they believe the angel Gabriel revealed the Holy Quran to Prophet Muhammad. Muslim worshipers around the world celebrate the festival of Eid al-Fatir, commonly known as Eid, to mark the end of the holy month of Ramadan. Many Muslims attend Eid prayers at their mosque for 10 days. Father Cyprian and the sisters joined the Muslims in solidarity, breaking the Ramadan fast, thanking God, the Supreme Creator and the Merciful One, and renewing their faithfulness to God as the patriarch Abraham was to Yahweh Allah. They prayed that God might give the dead life eternal. They sought a long, healthy life for all and peace and progress for their families in Bangladesh and the world, especially during the pandemic. They shared iftar with the workers, that is, food eaten at sunset after the day's Ramadan fast. There's hope against COVID-19. The vaccination process, Yome Vacuno, which began on February 3rd in Chile, first for health professionals and later extended to the elderly and workers with essential tasks and or health problems, has been gaining strength, although May did see an uptake in infections. Vaccinations are given to the population freely as scheduled by the Ministry of Health. In Chile, 6,693,685 people were vaccinated with the full dose, and counting those who received the first dose, it has reached a population of 14,777,093, according to the Yome Vacuno website, including the Holy Spirit Sisters. This is good news, shares Sister Maria Salome Labra, SSPS, since we know that many countries still do not have this resource. We offer prayers of thanks and pray also that everyone will have access. Cardinal Tagle concludes Laudato Si week. A liturgical celebration held in Rome and Assisi marked the conclusion of this year's Laudato Si week which aims to sensitize Catholics on the importance of caring for our common home. Presiding over the event was Cardinal Luis Antonio Tagle, Prefect of the Congregation for the Evangelization of Peoples. The celebration took place on Pentecost Sunday, May 23rd, at the General Curia of the Friars Minor in Rome and the Church of San Damiano in Assisi partly online and partly in person. The day before, an online cultural festival, Songs for Creation, had taken place. Speaking to Vatican News on the missionary mandate entrusted to Laudato Si animators of the global clim Catholic climate movement, pastoral workers, young people, and all people of goodwill, Cardinal Tagle said, in the mission of the church, every baptized person has received a gift from the Holy Spirit that must be developed by participating in the mission itself. And as regards Laudato Si, 
This is the care for our common home. Earlier in the day, Pope Francis had made a similar announcement at the Regina Chaley prayer in Vatican Square. Monday, May 24th, marked the sixth anniversary of Francis' comprehensive encyclical, Laudato Si. The Stang Owl. Dorothy Stang, a sister of Notre Dame de Namur, was never what one would call quiet when it came to injustice. In fact, she was assassinated in 2005 in Anapu in Pará, Brazil, while fighting for the Amazon forest and its people. Leader of her congregation, Sister Teresita Wind says, Dorothy was assertive without being aggressive. If she were still alive, she would be saying what needs to be done to save the planet. The Brazilian people who knew Stang said that when she died, they were not burying her, but planting her. Stang labored uninterruptedly for the rights of the family farmers harassed by illegal loggers and illegal ranchers. She tried every possible way to awaken the world to the fact that the Amazon forest is really the lungs of the planet. Now we shift the story to today. A new species of screech owl has been discovered deep in the Amazon forest by a multinational team of researchers from Brazil, Finland, and the U.S. Dubbed the Zynga screech owl, the little creature was given the scientific name Megascops stangier, stang, S-T-A-N-G-E-A, in honor of the martyred sister. One of four researchers in the study was Professor Alexandre Alexixo, who suggested the tribute, saying, Stang's fight to preserve the forest made her a natural choice and a way to bring attention to her fight. It is fantastic that after 15 years, these scientists had the enlightenment to call this owl by the name of Dorothy, voices one of her good friends in Brazil, Sister Judith Clemens. The Notre Dame sisters say, what we want to remain of Dorothy is the hope that a person can transmit to another person the value of creation and how everything in creation is connected. Pope Francis Laudato Si encyclical has this same inspiration, but Dorothy lived this interconnectedness long before the term was used in theology. If you have a comment or question, please email us at missionminutenews at wordnet.tv. You can also post your comments below each video on YouTube. We promise to respond. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell icon. Share with others about the channel and the variety of programs you enjoy there. Please join us every Wednesday for our online Eucharist and Adoration and Benediction of the Blessed Sacrament starting at 11 a.m. Pacific Time. To send us your prayer requests or to sponsor the Wednesday Eucharist, contact us by phone at 909-383-4333 or by email at mail at wordnet.tv. This is Mission Minute News. Until we meet again, stay safe and may Jesus' love for you make you smile.